Mike Lipper. Uh, he was crack a lack on the track, and uh, you know he brought he brought your boy a gift. So look, remember, you know, he, this is what you do. This man, you, you got that's respectable right there. He brought a gift. A lot of y'all come, y'all don't bring gifts. Okay, so this is um, what he's like got right way. here. This is the King's Classic tee. This is the one I was talking about. Embroidery, embroidery on the shirt. It's also got a tag on the sleeve. Okay, okay. Royal Legacy right there. Nice, nice little plastic to keep it safe. These guys don't cut any corners. Look at that. Y'all getting that? I think it's something down here. What, what's this? Oh, look at that. I got a code. I got a code for 15% off. Hold up. Y'all can't see that. That's for me. 15% off. Y'all got to purchase one to get this. This, this is legit. This is official. Okay. I, I see. I see. The hard work pays off, and I see why. These guys don't cut corners. Royal Legacy. Go check it out. Go to the website. Go cop a few. You know, if you ain't got at least three of these, you ain't doing it. Right. Yep, I'm actually uh, the co-owner of Royal Legacy Clothing. My partner Dylan, he's down in Miami. He's from Lansing also. But yeah, he's been down in Miami for about two years now. We started it a good three years ago. We came out every season for the last three years, and uh, yeah, World Legacy Clothing for Kings and Queens. We uh, we promote the Crown Life, positivity. It's a, a lifestyle brand. Uh, with with World Legacy, it's it's cool to see. Like when you first start a clothing line, you're gonna do good right away from like friends and family. So like when you first come out. You'll, you'll do good and you'll sell a lot of shirts. And then so you'll think that every season those same people will come back. But what happens is a lot of times people kind of, you know, they get a shirt to support you, but they're not going to continue to keep coming back every single season coming out with or getting every single shirt you come with. So it's important to always use the Internet, you know, with social media. I think a lot of times people forget what WWE W stands for the World Wide Web. So, you know, promoting online to gain new customers because you're not going to keep, if you just come out with clothes and you're selling them to the same customers over and over again, you're not growing. So, the goal at the end of the day is always to keep growing. And um, it's cool. I mean, we're getting orders from random people all over the United States now. So, it's definitely growing. It's definitely doing good. Uh, it, just consistency and um, professional pictures and the presentation. Um, you know, you got to present it the right way, and then you know, people people are accepting it and, and respecting the way that we're putting it out there. So, to market towards kings and queens, you gotta you know it has to have some class to it. So we're not gonna do photo shoots, you know, in a hood alley or nothing like that. We're gonna do it in front of boats and yachts and palm trees and. You know, nice. It's it's just all about the presentation. Yeah, thank you. I mean, we we like to put it in the same lane as far as like a uh, Apollo, Nautica, Tommy Hilfiger, Lacoste is kind of like the same market, I guess you could say, lane that we're we're going. The, the ones that we're doing now is uh, we have the King's Classic Tee and the Queen's Classic Tee. It's kind of like the polo style, just a simple. It's, they're all tri-blend shirts, so the, the fit is going to be good. And they just have a, a crown embroidery right here. And we have like about seven, seven or eight colors for the Kings and three colors for the Queens right now. Back when I was 15, when I realized I wasn't gonna be in the NBA or the NFL, I stopped focusing on sports. And I had a friend that was, uh, I woke up at his house, he was recording a song. He had made a beat with Fruity Loops and he was recording a song with a $10 computer mic. And then, you know, he was joking around like, hey, it's fun, you should try it too. So like, I just tried it for some fun. And then I kept wanting to make beats. And like, it was kind of like the thing every weekend, like, hey, when I come to your house this weekend, we should we should make beats or make songs. And then that was kind of like what I did 15, 16, 17, through the rest of high school. 
that I ended up buying my own studio equipment. And at the time I was, I was rapping and producing and I was always more confident in producing. Like I felt like if, if I was in the same studio with Lil Wayne, say, and I was playing one of my songs with me as a rapper, I would be constantly just looking over at his face, you know, for approval, like just seeing what he thought. I guess I wasn't as confident with that, but it beats, you could put me in the same room with any any artist, Tupac if he was still alive, Biggie, whatever, and I could be 100% confident. I'm very confident in my beats, so I stuck with beats, and um, yeah, I stopped rapping when I was about 23, but from about 17 to 23, I put out 16 CDs, so I was, I've always had work ethic in everything I did. It was just, it took me a little longer to find out exactly what I wanted to focus on as far as rapping and producing. But yeah, so since 23, the last five years have been focused strictly on business, producing, studio engineering, shooting videos. And then I started the CD duplication company four years ago, started the War Legacy Clothing three years ago, and then yeah. Probably like the, the last maybe 10 CDs are still online, but it was just like, you know, you, you do, I would do my first CD and I was recording so many songs so fast that there would be, you know, I would do a CD in three months or four months or so, something like that. And I would do all the beats for it too. And then I come out with the CD, start selling some copies or whatever, have big plans like, oh, with this CD right here. I'm going to New York, I'm, you know, I'm gonna submit it to labels, try to get a manager, I'm gonna move. And uh, what would happen is I would start recording some songs for the second CD. And then it'd be like, all right, forget about the first CD, I'm gonna wait till the second CD's done and then I'm gonna go big with it. And then I finished the second, or the second CD, so we're gonna third CD. Well, I kept doing that over and over and over and eventually I had 16 CDs out and I didn't like any of them and my voice would change and my style and yeah, so I, I just focused on producing and I'm, I'm very passionate with producing and growing businesses so that's that's what I do now. I, I have crackalikebeats.com. I really haven't been focused on that for the last year. Um, I did crackalikebeats.com for about eight years and you know it's good for producers that are starting out that want to like get some quick money like you know you lease beats for twenty twenty five dollars and you'll see that, that you can lease beats, you know. Some beats, you might lease the same beat for $20 20 times or 30 times, it depends on your popularity. But nothing nothing big ever came about from leasing beats in those eight years for myself. It was it was cool money, but it just it got to the point where it was like, you know what, I, I don't need the the leasing money. I would rather sell beats exclusively only, no, no more leasing, and then the artists, you know, if an artist buys a beat for two, three hundred dollars, or even if you gave a bigger artist a beat for free, more is gonna come about from that beat than if you just lease the beat for you know twenty dollars. Usually, the people that lease beats, you know, they're kind of just throwing the song on a mixtape. You know, they're not really investing too much in it. You know, because they're only investing twenty dollars in the beat. So, yeah, I, I really don't. I still have the website crackleggbeats.com. You can check it out for beats, but it's not something that I'm you know investing a lot of time into. Artists, you know, they kind of bounce around from studio to studio, and it's all about finding a good producer. It's like a home, you know. The artists, they, they need their studio that they go to, the producer that they mess with is like their home, and they're comfortable with it, and they stick with them. And, you know, I've been fortunate to work with a lot of local artists and then continue to work with them. You know, there's some artists that I've worked with that have put out, you know, six, seven CDs all, you know, through my studio, so. Crack. Crack. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, I've always been influenced by like the down south sound, the dirty south beats, and then crunk beats, and then trap beats, and then now the whole 808s and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, the whole crack reference, it, it fits. I used to hate the name Crack Lack on the track, and now nah, it, it just works. And then as, as far as being unique and stuff, Crack Lack is it's that crack. At first, back when I was 15 and, you know, my friend was telling me I should rap, I was just, you know, 
he was black dude, and me being white, I was like, man, a, a white dude, you know, I don't rap, people gonna make fun of me. He was like, why don't you just do what Eminem did in 8 Mile, you know, he made fun of himself. And so I was like, so what am I gonna call myself, like Cracker the Rapper, you know, like, you know, something like that. And so I was actually saying, like, Cracker was like my rap name. And then when I was making beats, it was kind of like, producers would have a tag, like, something on the track. Or, so I was like, crack a lack on the track, it, it rhymed, and you know, people say, what's crack a lacking? So I thought, you know, crack a lack is cool. And then around school, people would run into me and be like, crack a lack on the track, crack a lack on the track. I wanted to be like a, a one-stop shop for artists, so I had artists coming to me recording their, their CDs, and then I was also, you know, selling beats to them. And then, you know, the next step is like, hey, I just finished my CD. So I was into graphic design, you know, designing actual CD covers, and then they would need copies of it. So when I was rapping myself, I would need copies for it. So I would sit there and burn copies, and I bought this printer that would actually print one CD at a time. So I started doing CD duplication for people for a good year and a half, manually putting the CD in a burner, waiting two, three minutes for it to burn, and then take it out, set it in this burner, this printer, and it would take about a minute to print. And I would put it in the case, put the cover in, set it aside. That's one CD. And I would do thousands of CDs. And it, it got to where it would be annoying if people asked for CD duplication because I knew how much time it took. And I had saved up enough money to get an automated machine. You know, and it costs as much as a car. But I could actually load up the machine and leave and go shoot videos or leave and go do studio time or, or make beats or, you know, actually use my time and, and use my time for talent versus just labor hours, you know. So I bought my first machine, launched my website, and then after about a year, I bought a second machine. After three, four months, I bought a third machine, and after another six months, I bought a fourth machine, and the, the website really just blew up after about two years. I, I, I think the cost was, it was like a $50 printer, but at the time I was doing only Lansing artists CD duplication. So I was I was buying CDs and cases from like Office Max. So I was paying like top dollar, maybe making ten dollars off a hundred CDs or so like that. But to me it was just like, oh at least I don't have to get a job because I can do this for a couple hours and, you know, make up for that. But now I'm to where I'm ordering, you know, thousands and, you know, truckloads and pallets of CDs and pallets of cases and yeah. Um, I, I think the main thing is just, you know, in high school I had really no idea what I wanted to do. I remember 10th grade and then 11th grade and 12th grade when they go around and they're like, okay, we're doing career assessment. Uh, and it seemed like everyone had to figure out what they wanted to do, you know, like, oh, I'm going to be a firefighter, I'm going to be a police officer, I'm going to be a teacher, I'm going to be this. And for me it was like I wanted to be a, a famous rapper or a producer and that was just like kind of like a culturally unaccepted type of thing. It's not like typical, like, oh, everyone leaves high school, you go to college for four years, you get a piece of paper, and then you get a job, and you do that for until you retire. And I knew that that definitely wasn't what I wanted to do. And so I, I took the same mentality to, if, if you're gonna do something, you gotta do it right. And before you can do it right, you need to learn as much as you can about it and how the business works. And so with producing, I, I learned everything and I'm still learning today, it's just, you know, I, I learned so much just on how the business works, how to make money producing, how to make money doing videos and studio time and just, you know, one thing after another and then boom, you got a business that's working and then you take some money, save it up, start another business. Now you got two sources of income, then eventually you got three sources and, you know, so yeah, just a, a hustling mentality. I love everything I do, and obviously you, you want things to just keep growing the, the way that they're growing, you know, so yeah, just keep growing and then eventually, you know, you can hire people and provide jobs to, to do the, the time consuming stuff that I do now is with each business besides Cracklack. Cracklack is, is always going to be the one that is, is, is I am Cracklack, you know, so I'm always going to be the one. I can never hire someone to make beats for crack -a or shoot videos or whatever. So I would like to get to where 
I can hire employees and provide jobs for people to do the labor tasks like CD duplication and shipping orders and all that type of stuff. I would say I started doing music in general about 12 years ago, and then videos were about six years ago. And it kind of came just practicing doing videos of me making beats. So I had to learn how to like edit of making a beat video. And then when you see other people on YouTube that have better quality, it was like, okay, well, let me learn about cameras and how to use cameras and lenses. And so then I got upgraded my camera equipment and then upgraded the computer I was using to edit and just learning about all that. And um, I, I mainly do videos right now just to, to be, I know for a fact that I can provide a good video to go along with the songs I produce. And it, it kind of is just like the one-stop shop thing, where, you know, so if an artist comes to me now, I kind of only allow them to buy a beat and a video I mean, at the same time, uh, artists, they need music videos, they need beats, so I'm just kind of putting together a little package. And um, yeah, just music videos, they get the song out there so much more than just someone uploading the song to like SoundCloud and so many people listening to it. People would rather watch and see the video. So the main thing I've been doing is just beat and video packages where I'm producing the song and then I'm the one that's actually shooting the video too. So do, you, so do you give like a discount for people that get uh, the, the video through you or is just, they have you pretty much only, for the most part, uh, work with beats for people if they get the video? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a package deal. And I tell people too, even like artists that hit me up for a video and it's to a song I didn't even produce, I'll say, well yeah, I'm really trying to only do videos to songs that are my beats, you know, so I can get so many videos out there to crack -a beats to get crack -a out there more. So, yeah, I, I do package deals. And even the artists that come to me with their own songs already, not to my beats, I'll tell them like, well, I'll do that for this much, but for only this much more, I'll even make a beat. Or, you, you know, you can do a new song. Just I'm really trying to get the beats out there. Yeah, I think the main thing is just be in it for the long haul and knowing that success doesn't happen overnight. And usually with business, you can't quit your job and then just start your own business and live off that. You kind of have to have businesses are started with a, a stream of money. So even with crack -a right now, um, with my YouTube channel, like I'm spending money, you know, on that crack -a business and taking trips and traveling and paying the cameraman to film episodes and paying Facebook to sponsor posts and paying for Google ads and all that stuff. And I, I'm aware that I'm not gonna make a dollar from any of that for maybe even five years. But, but that's the mentality that you have to have and that have a source of income and then invest your time in building a business. And even when that business starts bringing in some money, put it back into the business so it can keep growing and then keep putting that money back into the business where eventually there's enough money where now you can start living off of the business's money. But that could take up to five years. I think the best route to go is like what Lil Wayne did in like 2006 and 2005 and I think 2004 to 2008-ish is just like flood, flood the market. and. Um, if, if you're a better artist than the other artists, I think the, the best way to stand out is beat them with quality and quantity. So if, if you got a whole bunch of shitty artists putting out one CD a year, you put out a good CD a year or put out two good CDs a year. And you know, instead of just putting out one video here and there, you put out two videos, three videos. Like just, you have to just work, work, work and stand out from the rest of them. The worst thing that you can possibly do in your music career is pay for fake statistics and then brag about those statistics. I think that that is a step. I don't think it gets slower than, than that. I see it all the time when people go, oh, book me, I got a million views. And like, you know, two people like your status or whatever. Like, it does you no good to have fake statistics because a rapper makes a living off being popular. So if you're not popular, you're never gonna make 
money. So you have to get real popularity. Even me as a producer, the more popular I am, the more money, you know, like the more I'm going to make off selling beats. It all comes down to popularity. If you were to get a 808 Mafia beat, they're super popular. If you put out a song and say produced by 808 Mafia, it's going to get hits because of their name. That's why they can charge more. Metro Boomin, he has a way bigger following than Crackalack. So I'm building my following, putting my money into Crackalack, and in the long run, it'll pay off. It's, you, you just have to make the time for it. And so it's easy for me, or easier for me, because I don't have a job, you know, where a specific nine to five or whatever. So I have 50-50 custody of my daughter. So the days that she is with me every single week, I don't do studio time. I don't plan anything on those days except for spending the time with her. I always have to do online business and orders and ship stuff like that. but. That's just, oh, spend 30, 45 minutes doing some work, play with her, take her, you know, spend the time. See, so yeah, the designated days for me and being able to make my own schedule is how I'm able to do that. The main one that I'm promoting is my YouTube, youtube.com slash TV. I upload episodes, which are kind of like, some of them are like a day in the life, some of them are like a week in the life or so. And then I also upload all the music videos that I produce go on my channel. And I upload some making a beat videos on there. We yeah, on Facebook, Crackalack, Instagram, Cracker underscore lack, Twitter, Crackalack. And those are really the main ones that I use. And then for CD duplication, one dollar CD duplication.com. For Warrior Legacy Clothing, Warrior Legacy Clothing .com. And then also you can check out extremepumps.com, which is a pre workout supplement that I'm involved with also. It's my brother's business, but I, I've always been into working out and I've always took a pre-workout supplement. For those that don't know what a pre-workout supplement it is, most people have a nine to five, so when you get out of work, you don't have a lot of energy to go to the gym. So they came out with these pre-workout supplements. It's usually caffeine and then some other amino acids to, to help with blood flow and endurance and get you going to go work out. And um, there's, hundreds probably thousands of different ones out there and I've always just went to the store and bought this one took it for a month bought this one took it for a month bought the you know and you kind of like, oh this one works pretty good this is pretty good so my brother was working at GNC for over a year and he had learned actual like what each ingredient does how much you need of each ingredient and he found out that uh most pretty much all the pre-workout supplements they sell in the store are super underdosed that's why you get guys that take two scoops of this or three scoops of this and so they're flying through a container of it so he took the time to come up with his own all-star mix of all the best ingredients and then he made them all clinical doses of each ingredient so if you take one scoop it's going to blow any other supplement out of the water as far as the strength so it, it actually works and then usually they have like a medicine type taste some of them are really weak and they taste kind of good so I was like, make a pre-workout that's stronger so it works better than everyone else, make it taste better than everyone else, and then make it cheaper than everyone else, and then you have a business that's going to do well. So he started that about two years ago, and he's been doing that, and that's kind of his own business, and I'm just helping him here and there. There was a time where I was uh, his partner with it, too. They really need to subscribe to this channel right here. Shout out to Mike Lippa. And then go over to Crackalack TV and hit the subscribe button.